Hi guys. Well, welcome to my kitchen. I was going to do this out in the yard, but it is kind of windy and it's the audio is it's just bad. It's really not great. So let's have a beer. I'm gonna have a big beer. You guys can pick and choose whatever size beer you want. And we're gonna get into this box of knives. Um, now we're not gonna look at everything. This is some stuff that a guy, a gentleman named Brandon Phillips, sent me from Louisiana. Now a lot of this stuff is stuff that we've seen a lot of times. But there's a couple things in here that I wanted to look at. Two things in particular we'll look at first. Which is in this pack right here. The other one is in this... Where'd it go? There it is. In this React case. Everything else, we've pretty much seen all the other stuff. There is a Microtech we're going to look at. But, so Brandon sent me all the stuff from Louisiana. Um, as you can see, it's a long list of items sent me a list of items. So, I mean, there was a couple Osbournes uh, that I, I did fix. Um, this one in particular was in pretty bad shape. I did uh, a lot of chip removal and edge repair on uh, and then took it up to mirror polish for him. Uh, but this is this stuff is all going out tomorrow. And I just wanted to get it. I, I told him uh, it was. I wanted to hold on to it to get a video. I started to shoot a video about it before, and it just, I just couldn't get it with all the stuff that was going on with the wife and kid and and them getting ready to leave for Japan. It was just too hectic, and I never got it finished. So I'm just shooting it all over. So that being said, we're gonna look at the cool stuff that was. And I mean, he sent me. A bunch of spider code delicas to uh, delica and then an h1 salt and a couple Chris Reeve uh, small sabenza and stuff like that just some stuff that we've already seen uh, a microtech OTF ultratech so I mean it was it's just all stuff we've seen but there is a couple things so I'll move this box off the side there's a couple things in here that were pretty cool now this the first thing we're gonna look at is an ABD an ADV battle cleaver. Now I've seen the ADVs before, but I've never seen one of the battle cleavers. And I'm gonna tell you, first of all, it's painted a butt sharpen. Second of all, it's cool. <laughs> it's pretty cool looking. It has a pretty interesting recurve tonto design. Now there's the recurve area at the back and then the flat edge at the front. Uh, this wasn't really easy to sharpen, I'm not gonna lie, but you can see it's got that, it's got a definite honest Tonto uh, edge where there's a, it's a, it's a dual grind. I mean, it's, it's a compound grind. And uh, it took a really good edge. So the ADVs, all of these ADVs that I've ever handled have been really smooth. They have a unique pivot. Uh, the adjustable pivot on it is, they're always unique. And then the pocket clips, I don't know if I just never noticed it before, but they have a roller. So the in and out of your pocket, now I'm gonna put it in my pocket. I'm not gonna show you, but I am gonna put it in my pocket. Signs and symptoms, you may be a chronic knife carrier. They are in and out of your pocket, smooth. Uh, action on them is always smooth. They are big. <laughs> they are big. This is like a kitchen knife, the size of a kitchen knife. But like I said, I'd never seen one with this dual two-tone uh, fake famone, if you would. So um, these were S30. These are S35VN. Now I do know that they make them in some other steels. Uh, like the, the other one that is in there is. Uh, there's another ADV in there. I think it's in D2. Uh, but predominantly ADVs are in S35 again. So, I mean, that one was pretty cool. That, that, I'm not gonna lie. Those are not easy to sharpen. I really, I hope I don't see another one of those again for a while. Now, 
there's another knife in here that's currently in my hand that I think this is the second one of these I've sharpened. They are all gorgeous. These are the K1, the React K1 in Damasteel with uh, Timascus. I'm not sure if it's Timascus or Mokutai, um, but these are beautiful and they get so, so sharp because it's Damasteel. Just Damasteel gets so scary, frighteningly sharp. So these. Dave knocks it out of the park. Dave Dank's company knocks it out of the park with these. These have an interesting pocket clip. If you can see, I think Todd Begg was the first person to use this. There's a ceramic ball in that. And uh, it's pretty smooth in and out of the pocket. It, it really is. I've, I've carried a couple of knives with it. If they're not tensioned too tight, this one's pretty tight. Um, in and out of the pocket, it it does have a tendency to be kind of tight. This one's pretty tight. Um, some of the other ones I've seen are not as tight, but you can you can actually see, if you look at it, the pocket clip, there's enough tension on that pocket clip that it is bowed. So if you're wearing thicker trousers, something like that might not be what you're looking for. But uh, these, uh, these are in need of all these K1s, the only problem with them is they are in need of a sharpening notch. Because I'm going to have to tell Brandon, uh, I, I, there's some spots where you can still see the original factory edge back towards the back because I didn't want to take any more material off his knife. It doesn't make sense. It's just aesthetics. So there's some spots where, you know, you can still see the grind on it because that, that choil just is not adequate. So, but it's not like I could just cut in a notch on this knife and then refinish it. It would be, oh God, that would be horrible. So, um, but no, just titanium and Mokutai. Nice. Nice. Well executed by Riat. Damasteel looks really good. I do say, I will say though, I've seen other companies polish you guys know I love Riat. I do love Riat knives, but I've seen other companies do a, a better job polishing the Damasteel before they etch it. Um, and I think maybe it's because I'm spoiled because I'm seeing some of Elliot's knives. The Damasteel that I did this morning, if you watched the live feed that I did, freaking mirror, mirror polish. Super mirror polished. Um, it was gorgeous. Um, this, you can still see a lot of the you can still see a lot of the grinds, the grind lines. So I don't think that they take it as far. I don't think they, obviously they don't. You can still see a lot of the grind lines. Um, Elliot did a lot of, Elliot does a lot of hand sanding though with something like that. So that's a React K1 that came in. So like I said, I'm, I'm doing these a quick overview because a lot of these knives we've already seen. Now this next one, you guys have seen me sharpen a K1 before. Um, the Battle Cleaver, no, I don't think we've ever seen. We've seen the ADVs. This is one I've never seen. So this is a Tachyon 3, a Microtech Tachyon 3. And I'm usually not, I'm usually not a Balasong guy. I'm really not. But this one is actually really, it, it kind of, this one kind of got my attention. First of all, I like the color scheme. I like black and yellow. Black and yellow is almost to me as aesthetically pleasing as black and green. And if you guys have seen, um, I know there's a handful of you guys that have lusted after my Archbishop in black and then toxic green. Black and yellow can be almost as attractive. Now this is not, this is not black ceramic. I think this is just this black paint of some sort, black dip. I'm not sure what it is. It doesn't appear to be as resilient, but that spring on that, I mean, it's, uh, it pops open and it does not, there's no way that that's gonna get in the way of the blade in its travel, which a lot of times with battle songs, that's what you get, that flips in and it hits and, and things like that. But the other thing is the blade shape. That blade shape, and I, I figured out why, 
I figured out why it appeals to me. The movie Dune. <laughs> At the end, when Sting has the 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 knife from the uh, Emperor. If you guys have ever, I'm a, I'm a sci-fi fan. I'm sorry, science fiction fan. The movie Dune. The bad guy Sting winds up playing a bad guy. He takes a knife from the Emperor, and it has that really unique belly forward blade shape kind of like this does where it's got a kind of a recurve here and it's got that big heavy blade forward shape to it um really you can see it right there really interesting blade shape the other thing is i've never seen a, and i'm i'm sure that you ballast song guys because i know there's a few of you guys out there that follow me i've never seen a ballast song that runs on bearings and this obviously runs on bearings. I can see them. It runs on ceramic bearings, as a matter of fact. I can see the ceramic bearings protruding from uh, my viewpoint. Now, I wouldn't want to take this apart, even though there's a tool in there. Uh, it is super, super smooth. And it's done in LMAX, and it got really, really sharp. But that black and yellow really gives it a unique... It gave it a really unique shape and look but the other thing is there's some serious this thing is light light super light there was some serious weight saving done on this so there you go the tachyon 3 the black and yellow and that spring thing now i've never understood a, it has a pocket clip why you would even ever attempt to carry so i don't know i meant to ask brandon if this tool is something that he bought after market or if this is something that has started coming with Microtex, because it would be nice to be able to take your, your stuff apart, right? It's nice. I currently have a bunch of knives that people want me to do, and I'm like, look, here's the thing. If you want me to take that Microtex apart, you have to buy the tool. You can do one of two things. You can buy the tool and pay half the price of the tool, and I'll keep it, and I'll use it for the rest of the knives, or... You buy the tool, you keep it, and I'll send it back, and you just keep the tool, and I use it that one time for your for your knife. But it, it's really, it's with their proprietary hardware, and they change it pretty often, so it's kind of difficult. So, but that's it, guys. Those are the ones that were in that box from, from Brandon that I really wanted to show you guys. Everything else is stuff that we've already seen, but there is one more knife that's here. Well... You know what? No, we already looked at it. We looked at it in the live feed, but you know, I'll go get it. Hang on a second. It's right here. So we'll look at it up close because I know in a live feed, sometimes things can be blurry and it's sharp now. This is the knife that my friend Dennis gave me to sharpen. Um, and this was made actually in the metal shop at a Russian prison, if you can believe that. Um, his brother is a police officer in Russia, and uh, I'm not going to lie. There was some pretty good skilled workmanship done on this, and uh, it's, oh, it's sharp. It is so sharp because it's so thin behind the edge, ground really straight, uh, and polished. So... It does have a pretty, pretty bad sheath though. It's, um, it feels like that pleather, that vinyl pleather stuff that, that you would get, uh, the kind of the fake stuff, the fake leather. So I'm gonna get with Dennis and see if he wants to maybe send it off to my friend, Matt, to get a new sheath. So, you wanna hear a, a running family joke? Now that I have the big beer in my hand? My grandfather, <laughs> this, is, this is hilarious, my grandfather, my father's father, would buy four quarts, four big, four of these, the biggins, the big boys, of um, Milwaukee's Best every day. Four of these. A gallon. He would drink an entire gallon. He would buy four of those every day. And I asked the man one time, my like, grandpa, why don't why do you get big beers like that? He said, Michael John, it's that way. When your grandmother asked me how many beers I had. 
I can look at her without lying. I can look that woman in the eye and say, baby, I had three beers. Or, honey, I had four beers. And it's not a lie. And I was like, he would get drunk. That old man would get drunk. So, all right, guys. Um, one shot video. Not going to fucking edit anything. Uh, I am open for business. I have unlimited amounts of time right now. I, as long as I'm not doing laundry or drinking beer, which I can sharpen while I'm drinking beer, I am open for sharpening and refinishing. So I know that there's been a lot of questions about refinishing, things like that. But like I said in the live feed today, I am going to start taking the estimate up front. I understand that that is a big change for a lot of you guys. I just, I, I can't pay my mortgage on IOUs. It has gotten to the point where I had somebody say that, I had somebody say it to me. They're like, you need to do it because your, your good nature has allowed people to take advantage. And it's not it's not everybody. There's there's people that I understand they got a little overzealous and sent too much stuff. That that's a one time thing, that's fine. But it has there are cert, there are some people that it just it becomes a running thing where, oh well, yeah, I know I said I'd have it this week, but I don't. I know I said I'd have it this week, but I don't. And I, I have things that have sat here for a very long time. And it it does me no good. So we what we're gonna do is we'll start taking I will give you the estimate, which is basically we can do it with whatever it is you decide you want because we basically know $25 gets you baseline, $30 gets you to 10,000 grit, 35 gets you to 12,000. We can use that as a baseline estimate. Anything on top of that, you know, if there's damage, we can work that out on the backside. Um, so basically what we're gonna do is basically the estimate plus shipping. As far as refinishing, we'll go with just like the baseline $100 covers the refinish and sharpening and then if it's more complex then we'll figure that but at least that gets me so that I have the money to be able to do the things that I need to do and you guys have got stuff and I can work on it so but that's still I still need no matter what we've worked out I still need the note so all right guys I have got to get off of here I want to talk to my baby girl I got to try and get some FaceTime in with her you guys take it easy. I've got to get all this stuff put away, and I will talk to you next time.